All right, we have our University of California panel. I start off with Justin from UC San Diego. All right. Uh, Thanks, sir. Uh, hi. So I am. Hey, let's see. We got you want presenter notes? No. Let me find them. So I'm just busy. all right. Okay. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Justin Eldridge. I'm from UC San Diego. Um, I'm an assistant teaching professor there and the vice chair for undergraduate studies, whatever that means, in the Holly Geo and Data Science Institute. Uh, my background in research is in machine learning theory, and so I tend to teach more of the theory courses, but I've taught across our curriculum from our intro course, DSE 10. All the way up to the capstone. I was a mentor in our uh, capstone, which I'll talk about, about here in a second. Um, to start with the demographics of UCSD, I put up here. This is for the campus overall. So 75% of our students come from California. And I put our first time, first year demographics versus our transfer demographics here because it's a little bit surprising. I, I think the first time I saw these numbers. Uh, versus, uh, you know, first generation students program. Uh, underrepresented students are traditionally underrepresented. Um, I will say that, you know, this is UCSD as a whole, our major uh, has considerably less entropy than even this distribution of papers. It's, it's very homogenous. Um, our major itself launched in 2017. Our first graduating class was in 2021. Uh, we have about 1,100 majors. It's hosted in the Heli Geoli Data Science Institute, uh, which means that we have faculty who are 100% within the institute. We have, I think, 13 or 14 of them. Uh, but then we have a good number of faculty who have joint appointments in other departments. What that means for students is they may be taught by a someone from the Data Science Institute um, with a full appointment in HDSI, or they may be taught by a statistician or a computer scientist in another department. Um, however, most of our core courses are built from scratch and are labeled data science. We, we built the, the curriculum um, mostly from the ground up. Uh, and a couple of highlights uh, that I'll point out for our program in particular, we have routine project-based courses. So one in the first year, one at the end of the second year, and then it culminates in a capstone, a senior capstone, a two-quarter capstone at the end. Um, and I'll say the guiding philosophy that right here. Oh, gotcha. This something like that. All right, for the owl, right? Okay, for the owl. Um, <clears throat> the guiding philosophy, whenever the program was designed, I, I wasn't there, but I saw on poll, is that uh, when people looked around at the jobs that were hiring uh, and were called data science jobs, oftentimes they required a master's degree or a PhD. And so the people who put together the curriculum said, let's look at master's degrees in data science and do that in a four-year program, a four-year bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that's necessarily a unique uh, strategy, but it, it informs the curriculum that you're going to see in the next few slides. Um, and then I guess I'll culminate or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll comment on the outcomes. Is that is that happening? Are students getting jobs? Uh, in data science with our degree. And here, I wish I had more conclusive numbers. What I have are self-reported numbers from last year. Um, of the 60% or 70% of students who responded to a survey, about 40% went on to graduate school. About 60% got jobs in industry. About 50 to 60% of those who got jobs in industry got jobs as data scientists and about 40% got jobs as software developers. So that may be what they wanted to do anyways. They may have wanted a more software track. Uh, you know, as data scientists, you should say, well, what about the people who didn't respond? Did they get placed at all? And, and that, I, I don't know, right? So um, we have a minor in data science. There are about 300 minors. Um, it's uncapped as compared to our major, which is capped. What that means is um, students who want to transfer into the major from within UCSD have to have to apply and they have to have their screen. There's a screening course requirement. 
Uh, that's not true for the minor. Uh, we also have a master's degree, a PhD, and then soon we'll have an online master's in data science. All right, so this is our lower division curriculum. Uh, we start with DSE 10, which you can think of as uh, similar to data eight. So if you're teaching data eight at your institution um, and you want to submit an articulation request, it'll, it'll likely count as DSE 10. From there, the curriculum splits off into two tracks, a theory track and a, a programming track. So the programming track, uh, DSE 20 and DC, DSE 30, this is Python, of course in Python, and of course in Java. Um, and data structures is emphasized throughout both of those courses. The theory track, we have DSE 40A. And in that class, um, you know, this is an introduction to the idea of framing learning as optimization. Um, so students will see in this class, like when I teach it, uh, least squares models, so least squares regression and classification, maybe perceptron models, uh, principal components analysis. Um, but all of those are excuses to teach them math. It's a mathematics course. They've taken multivariate calculus. It's not enough. They need refreshers on it in 40A. So I think of it as a math methods course where we go back and we say that, you know, the gradient here, here it is in the context of data science. Okay. Um, 40B is a, the second course in the sequence. Um, it's more focused on algorithms and graph theory. The way I kind of frame this is 40A sets up the math problem, but once you've set up an optimization problem, for instance, you have to actually compute the answer and the optimization problem you set up may not be tractable. So like in 40B at the very beginning, I give a, a, an optimization, I frame clustering as an optimization problem. And then I say, well, you know, it's not enough just to brute force an answer. That would take a long, long time. So we, we develop a bunch of, uh, you know, computer science fundamentals, graph theory, and at the end, I solve it with a graph mm -hmm. algorithm. Um, these two tracks come together in DSE 80. I kind of think of this as our lower division capstone. So DSE 10 is project-based in a sense, but it's very constrained. Students are given clean data sets. They're very nice to work with. DSE 80, it's not as nice. They're given messy data. They may have to get the data themselves um, and then clean it and then perform some analysis on it. Uh, so it really is sort of a sequel to DSE 10, but now they know stuff. They know some programming, they know some theory. Um, and then this is the launching point, DSE 80 is the launching point for the upper division. Um, so I mentioned multivariate calculus, we also require linear algebra. DSE 40A is also a recap of that because we're on the quarters at UCSD, as every, every UC is, except for Berkeley and Merced. Um, linear algebra is a 10 week course, and they talk about eigenvectors for like a day. And, <laughs> and that's not enough, right? Uh, that's the scariest word to, to our undergrads is eigenvector. Um, so we, we talk about it in much more detail in 48. Putting that math in context, I think is important. I'll say like I was an undergraduate physics major and I took a math methods course there. I took multivariate calculus, that's fundamental for physics. I didn't know Green's theorem and Stokes theorem and all that stuff, but we covered it again in our physics major. And I see 40A as being similar to that for data scientists. Our upper division looks like this. Um, so we've got probability and statistics taught in the math department. Um, in any combination of these courses over here. Uh, we've got a systems uh, track. So we've got a database management class and then a distributed systems class or cloud computing class uh, and a visualization course in DSE 106. We've got three machine learning courses in DSE 140A and 140B and then a data mining course, which is kind of like applied machine learning. Our RML courses 140 and 140B are more theoretical. Uh, and then students take five electives and then a two quarter capstone sequence, which I'll talk about here. So our capstone is one of the hallmarks of our program. It's a two quarter capstone sequence. Um, the first quarter is project replication. Students will read a paper or see a project and try to reproduce it. In the second quarter, they're going to produce novel work. They have come up with a project on their own and completed. Um, Students work in small groups of two to four students. 
with one to three teams to mentor. And we think this is really important. So every, every faculty member associated with the Data Science Institute is responsible for running a capstone domain and uh, mentoring five, six students. And this is really important for a large school like UCSD where we have 33,000 undergrads. A lot of times students don't know, or faculty don't know the names of the students. This is a way that we can get faculty in a room with a small number of students. It's also very important for the students to be able to produce a portfolio of work. So when they go off and apply to jobs, they can show a report, a presentation, a poster, a website, um, all four of those things actually this last year. And so uh, Saraj Trampore, who, who uh, runs the capstone now, um, created this website, dsc-capstone.org, uh, which I'm very proud of, has, has a list of all of the capstone outputs this year. Sarah did an awesome job with it. Uh, I'm really impressed with what our students did. Um, so pain points. Um, so I'm a little embarrassed to say that demand is a pain point for us in the sense that we have very high demand and that's a good problem to have. Um, the challenges that it causes is, um, you know, one, students who want to transfer into the major, it's becoming less and less possible. I went to a large state school. One of the main benefits of a large state school was being able to transfer, go to a different major. Like, oh, I, I like physics more than aerospace engineering. I'm going to go do that. Um, but because of the demand, it's, 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 it's almost not possible. Um, we had 25 seats per application cycle last year, 125 applicants, and the median screen GPA was a 4.0. Like, perfect, you know, we can't, we, so that's a challenge. Um, and then just, you know, there's a lot more moving parts whenever you have 1,000 plus students. Um, time to graduation for community college transfers is a major problem that we're trying to solve. We're working with, with Sean and Maricosta on this. Um, the problem there is we have courses that we think are, you know, we view data science as a new discipline um, that requires, uh, you know, in, in certain cases, new courses, new pedagogy. And so um, we just need to be able to work with community colleges to implement that elsewhere. Um, and then I say mathematical background and context. So this is like things like multivariate calculus and linear algebra. Students see it once in the math department, but in a very general context. We want to provide it in a data science context. So we need to keep coming back to it and provide that context. So next steps, uh, I've said already, we're working with area, San Diego area community colleges to implement pathways. So there we have two key courses in DSC 40A and DSC 80. So 40A is that math methods course I was talking about. DSC 80 is that lower division capstone course I was talking about. Um, and what we'd really like to do is make a summer bridge program where we offer DSC 80 over the summer specifically for a cohort of transfer students so they, they can get to know each other over the summer. And also, I mean, that course is very intense. Um, it's one of those rare courses where students in the eval say, this was a super hard class, but it was also the most important class I took here. And when we survey students who get internships, and we say, what was the class that was the single class that was most important? They point to that one as the one that, that prepared them for their internship. Um, it was designed by a data scientist at Amazon, Eric Frankel, who, who was a faculty member at UCSD. Um, and so it's very practically relevant. Um, and then we've just been throwing around some possible curriculum revisions now that we've been teaching this for six years. We found a few things that don't work. Maybe we want to change. <laughs> One of the interesting things is the we started with the idea that students should learn a domain. They should learn biology or something like that so that they can look at the data with from a biological context to make sense of it. What we found is that taking bio one and bio two was perhaps not enough preparation to be able to work with genomics data sets, right? And so it, it wasn't a very effective use of their time. The, what I've been saying is perhaps students don't need to learn a domain. They don't need to be domain experts, but they need to know how to communicate with domain experts. And so we're trying to push more communication in our major. Um, we're going to add an ethics component, a tools course. So student, students in our major do learn Git, for instance. Uh, they learn to work in the shell. 
but it's kind of in a haphazard way. It's not taught, you know, very intentionally. We're going to have like a two unit course that will do that. Uh, streamlining key math background, you know, there's like three machine learning courses and each of them has to do a linear algebra recap at the beginning of the quarter. And so we just want to have a common set of material that they can draw from so that students see math and even just the same notation throughout all their courses. And so this summer, I'm going to be working on a, a textbook that we'll use throughout our lower division machine learning theory course in 40A and our upper division machine learning. Um, we're going to try to implement parallel tracks for intro programming. So for students who come in without uh, programming experience, we're going to take that Python course and split it into two quarters. They can do that if they want a slower paced uh, intro. Um, and then we're going to take our Rethink machine learning a little bit so that students do a practical lab concurrent with the theory course. So they're learning the theory and the, the practice at the same time. All right. Okay. So that's it for me and UCSD. I put my email down there. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, so I'm Marion Salim. I'm a um, teaching professor at um, UC Riverside in the Computer Science Department. I'm also the undergraduate advisor uh, for our um, data science program. Um, so the classes that I've taught um, ranging from lower division to some graduate courses. So uh, some of the courses are data ethics, which is new. I taught um, in the winter. This year, um, our data analysis methods, uh, which is a very applied course, teaching students how to do data wrangling and data cleaning, um, data mining courses, um, web development courses, and database courses. Um, and then I also teach our two quarter um, capstone course for data science and computer science majors. Um, this is the demographics um, for UCR as a whole and for our College of Engineering and our College of Sciences. And I, I put both here because our data science program is across um, these two colleges and across two departments. So you can get a little bit of a view. So as you can see, um, UCR is very, um, very diverse in that we have a lot of um, first generation college students, um, a large um, underrepresented minority students um, and low income students. Um, and uh, we see similar trends uh, when you look at the College of Engineering and College of um, Natural Sciences. Um, the, the difference, the main difference really is that the College of Engineering, which houses our computer science program, um, has much fewer um, female students. And our hope is that when we created this data science program is that we will recruit a more diverse group of students. Um, when um, uh, through, by by partnering up with the with the other college. So this is an overview of data science programs at UCR. Um, we started our bachelor's in, uh, in data science in fall of 2020. Um, so that was during COVID, and actually the program was not on the catalog even, so not many students knew about it. So the, the, the group that we got, it was actually uh, students who changed majors. So nice. we emailed you know, all the computer science majors, all the data science majors, or any students we thought that may be interested in, told them, you, know, you want to change your major to data science. And we got a good cohort of about 25, 25 students. Yeah, very sneaky. <laughs> uh, so that was our first cohort. Um, so those were change of major uh, students, and we got a couple of transfer students coming in. And we had our first graduating class this, this spring, so we're really excited about that. Um, currently, we have about 188 students um, in the program. Um, the program is, again, joined between two colleges and two departments. So we have the College of Engineering and then the College of Natural Sciences, um, which are House of Computer Science and Statistics Department. So when students are accepted, they're accepted into a college, and they would then belong to that college and then, you know, um, decide on majoring in data science within that college. So they, they end up completing the GE requirements um, for that particular college, and their advisors would be um, from that particular college. 
Um, one of the cool things about the program, which it seems to be very similar to UCSC, is that we have an application area or a domain area requirement for our majors. So students, in addition to taking their stats and, and computer science courses, they have to take a two-quarter sequence in an area other than CS and statistics. So they can take courses in biology or finance or things like that. Um, currently, all of these courses are just, you know, the, the ones that we found in the catalog that are relevant, but our hope for the future is that um, we'll create interdisciplinary courses that will service students from other majors and, and service our data system. So uh, hopefully we can expand on that. Other programs we have is the minor in data science, which we launched this fall. And this minor is open to all majors except uh, for CS, CAT, and data science. Um, so uh, that's um, currently up. And then we also have an MS in computational data science that um, will be launching this year. And so our hope is to create a BS plus MS program for our data science students uh, to continue on their graduate work. And we're also trying to align requirements so that students, you know, in other degree programs who complete the DS minor will have the required prerequisites to go into our MS program if they wish. So if you are, um, you know, some social science student who decided to do the minor in data science, we would like you to be able to do the MS in, in data science um, and uh, pivot if, if that's uh, an interest of yours. So that's um, some of the initiatives um, that we have. This is the um, BS in Data Science uh, course fund. Um, so I first highlighted the computer science courses. Uh, we have our CS9A and B, which is our CS1 and 2. Um, initially, we had um, uh, the courses, um, you know, just drawn from existing courses in computer science and statistics. So we wanted to make sure that new course development um, in the beginning of the program um, were not, uh, you know, too intensive. So um, uh, the original um, pr programming course sequence was in C++, but since then we developed two parallel tracks. So one in C++, one in um, Python, and students can elect to choose either one. We encourage our data science students to go to the Python pathway, but if they already come with C++ and they want to continue through that pathway, that's fine. Um, if they come in with um, Python or something else, we do have another two unit course that they can take to learn C++ for other courses that they take down the line. Um, our um, CS10C is our data structures course. CS100 is where they learn their tooling. So they learn about version control, they use Git, they, they learn about project management, and they learn about larger software development. Um, so this is where um, those uh, material is emphasized. We did create a couple of new courses for the degree program. So you see here is CS105. This is our data analysis methods for students uh, learning data wrangling, data cleaning, um, and things like that. And it's a very applied course. They do uh, an applied project at the end of this course. And we also have a data science ethics course that we taught for the first time um, this year. Um, uh, and uh, it, it services both the data science major and minor. Um, and students take uh, a number of um, courses like machine learning, data mining. Um, we created a new course, 167, Big Data Management, that emphasizes um, things like Spark and Hadoop and, and uh, um, uh, distributed databases. Um, obviously, the program also includes statistic courses. So um, we pulled um, some courses from statistics, like intro to data science, um, intro to statistics, um, regression analysis, and we did end up creating a two-quarter um, sequence, stat 156A and B, um, that was specifically tailored to our data science students. Um, this is the view of our data science minor. Um, so it some of the courses overlap. So students take you know CS9 A and B, which is our CS1 and 2. They go into our CS105, the data analysis methods course. Then they take data science ethics 
which is applied. So students do have to do a little bit of programming, working with real data sets, considering ethical problems. And then um, they take um, statistic courses, intro to statistics, stat 10, uh, stat 10 or stat 8, and stat 156A. And then they can choose two electives um, from any of the, the courses that we offer. And our hope is that students in other majors who are probably already taking some of these courses, like CS9A, to satisfy either major or GE requirements, you know, once they learn about the minor, then it's easier for them to, you know, double count courses and then um, uh, pursue this minor and, and uh, so, you know, enhance their, their education. In terms of pathways, it's something that we're really passionate about. So as part of the NSL Data Science College Grant, we partnered with um, three community colleges to ensure that there's transferable courses into our data science program. And those colleges also um, just launched a, a, a associate's degree in data science and a data science certificate. So um, they've articulated the associate's degree with UCR, with UCSD, UC Davis. So um, that pathway is there. And our hope is that through the Learning Lab Pathways Grant, we're going to grow that partnership and bring on um, more community colleges um, and support them in doing that. Um, we also um, uh, accept, obviously, transfer students. This is the transfer students' requirements. Uh, so they either take um, programming courses, which is uh, CS1 and 2, and either data structures or discrete structures, or the other minimal requirement for transfer is some statistics courses and a um, so um, these are the, the minimum requirements to transfer to our data science major, and they need a, a GPA of 2.5. Um, we're also working on pathways so that um, students who complete a BS or a minor in data science can go on to the master's degree. So this is some of the other things that we're working on in the near future. So some of the next steps that I already mentioned is expanding partnerships and pathways. Um, uh, so some of the things that we'll be working on is developing new courses. Um, currently, our capstone course is taught in two different uh, departments. So for our students in engineering, I teach the capstone course. For students in the College of Natural Sciences, they teach a capstone course. So the, the students, the data science students, unfortunately, are divided, which is not ideal. But now that we have a bigger cohort, it makes sense to develop our own capstone course uh, going forward. Um, we don't currently have a data visualization course, so that's something that we'll be working on. And we're also interested in creating a general a GE data um, science ethics course for everyone on campus, because that's something that we heard from a lot of people that they're interested in. Um, we would like to create more interdisciplinary courses um, and revisit the math requirements, because um, right now it's very calculus um, and math heavy um, in our major. And uh, continue to work with um, community college, uh, uh, community college um, uh, to uh, facilitate the, the transfer pathways going forward. The issues that we really, um, you know, you know, have um, difficulty with is, you know, making sure that transfer students graduate on time. That they um, don't double take. You know, usually that their graduation rates are looking more like six years um, compared to our first time freshmen. So making sure that pathway is really smooth so that they graduate in time and, um, and, and how to, to support them in that by offering the boot camps or like bridge courses over the summer so that they're well prepared when they do the Look at the big screen. Okay. All right. Thanks. Hi. Uh, my name is Rubel, faculty member. This is Merced. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so before I talk about myself, I'm going to talk about Merced because nobody seems to know what Merced is. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, I'm excited. Okay. Great. 
want to stay in the Philippines. All right. Okay. So Merced is about two hours southeast of here. That's about two hours. And people say it's in the middle of nowhere, but we say it's the middle of everywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's close to Yosemite. All right. Um, it's it's a tenth campus, the newest campus in the UC system. It opened in two thousand four to graduate students. And then in 2005, that's when they admitted undergraduate students. Our students come from, a third of our students come from the Central Valley, a third from the Bay Area, and a third from Southern California. So it's all over the, uh, the state. It's a Hispanic serving institution, and we're a full-fledged UC uh, school, meaning we, all, we offer PhD graduate uh, studies. So they have uh, 27 majors and 25 minors. They have about more than 8,000 students. And we have 17 PhD programs and about 750 uh, graduate students. Um, yeah. oh, the interesting, uh, one of the interesting things about UC Merced is that we don't have a pure math department. Our math program is completely, I want to say purely applied. <laughs> right, so we don't teach topology, we don't teach algebra, we teach differential equations, um, we teach optimization, uh, that kind of math. I mean, that's what we do. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about the demographics that uh, Houston have said. So maybe I'll focus more on the first. So um, the campus has uh, more than 8,000 students, uh, and maybe you can look at this uh, row here. It has uh, the, the percentage of, of URMs is 61%. That's a pretty high uh, percentage of uh, underrepresented minorities. Um, and uh, the second column is the computer science major. And I'll explain why I'm looking at this. And then the third column is the applied math major. So if you look at the second column, the total number of uh, computer science majors is more than a thousand. Uh, about a thousand students. So in fact, we have more CS majors than, than UCLA, even though we're about a third or a quarter the size of UCLA. Um, so what does that mean for our campus is that this program is severely impacted. Okay, so we don't have enough faculty to teach this. And one of the impetus for having a data science program on, on our campus is to relieve some of the stress on, on that program. Yeah, so there's there's great incentive for us to to to, to teach uh, data science. Okay. All right, so now uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Jamel. I'm a faculty member in applied mathematics. I'm a, the grad program chair this uh, this past four years. And I'm stepping down. Um, instead of talking about the classes I taught, I'm going to talk about the some of the programs I've, I've helped run that was funded by the NSF. So a couple of years ago, I was the director of a, an RE program uh, called Applied Research and Modeling and Data Enabled Science for our communities. Um, so we had uh, undergrad students come to our campus and we taught them modeling and data, data enabled science. So data enabled science was, was the NSF terms, a, a term, I guess, 10 years ago. So before data science, there was data enabled science. So a lot of the terms that we use have data enabled science in them. Um, and then we also got a, some funding to uh, enhance our applied math major. Um, we had a program called data enabled science and computational analysis research training and education for students, uh, the Descartes program. And that enabled us to have an emphasis track in our applied math major on computational and data enabled science. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But in essence, it, it's kind of set up some of the courses that we're going, we're planning on teaching in our uh, uh, data science program. And then uh, currently we, we run a, a graduate training program on uh, called Data Intensive Research and Computation, the URAC program. So one of the things I really enjoy is coming up with acronyms. So, <laughs> um, so if you do have a program, if you'd like, you need help with your name, I'd be happy to collaborate. I would say this is a non-trivial role of Ramel in our department. I think people we'll have names. Yes. We, yeah, absolutely. These are all him, the names. Okay. Um, all right. 
So we currently don't have a data science program, but two programs just got approved um, within the administration. One, the first one that um, I'm involved in is uh, in uh, Bachelor of Science in Data Science and Computing, and another one, a Bachelor in Arts program in Data Science and Analytics, right? So the Data Science and Computing program is run within the School of Natural Sciences, and the Data Science and Analytics is run in the School of Engineering, which will eventually go into the School of Management, or the School of Management is finally formed. Okay, so um, this is one of the issues that we're gonna face in our campus is because you have these two data science programs that is a little bit confusing. And if you look at some of the course requirements, there's some overlap. Um, so this is one of our pain points uh, um, I'll mention later on. And as I said before, we have an applied math uh, major that has an emphasis track on the computational data, data enabled science. Um, which has courses in numerical linear algebra, uh, modern applied statistics, and, uh, and stochastic processes, which we could use within uh, the, our proposed data science program. Okay, so um, one of our goals um, in, in our data science program um, is that uh, beyond, is to have beyond the uh, technical skills that students would learn is that they uh, realize the ethics and the human impacts of, of data science. Yeah. And I just want to mention our program development team here. Um, uh, Dave Ardell is in the molecular and cell biology, myself, Emily Jane, who is in the life and environmental sciences. Grant is a lecturer, and Erica in applied mathematics. And my colleague Suzanne, who's here, and maybe a lot of you know her, um, is in applied math, and she's, a, she's in the chair of the department. And another le lecturer, Derek Solberger, who's, uh, who's online. Because as you can see here, um, it's not just um, run by applied math faculty. So we have faculty from environmental sciences, um, um, like uh, in biology, and Suzanne is also within the uh, quantitative systems biology program. Erica is also part of the biology program. So it's not just one department who owns this. Okay, so it's a really a collaborative effort that uh, kind of joined together to create this this uh, this program. So there are lots of inputs um, uh, when, when, we, when we form this uh, program. Okay, so this is how it looks like. All right, oh my gosh, one more diagrams. Okay, <laughs> all right. So you have your usual calculus on the first column here. Um, and then we're going to introduce a new course uh, called Math 41, uh, Linear Algebra, but this is really a misnomer because we have linear algebra courses, and, and the way we teach linear algebra, it's within the context of solving systems of linear equations or differential equations. But I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's not what the students are interested in. I think we want to call this something like matrix analysis, right? Where you really just want to get into like, I don't know, SGT, right? Um, so that you can apply it to the data. Um, so we're going to develop a new course in, uh, on, on matrix analysis. Uh, and then we'll have a data uh, course with a pattern after uh, the Berkeley model. And then we'll have our own introductory computing uh, course. And those classes lead to uh, uh, a more advanced level uh, in the upper division uh, uh, level. Okay, so we have probability statistics and then an ethics class um, and then the data 100 class, which is also very similar to the data 100 class here in Black Berkeley, and then intermediate computing. Then that leads to uh, like, uh, something uh, more sophisticated mathematics like modern applied statistics. And then we're going to require the students to take additional upper division courses like biostatistics, or optimization, or nonlinear dynamics. The, there's a lot of options for, for, the, for those courses. And then on the very uh, last column there are three courses in their domain emphasis. Okay, so we're going to have, right now we have six domain emphasis uh, proposed in chemistry, physics, um, I think it was mechanical engineering, or material sciences, uh, physics, and applied mathematics. Okay, so that's our major. That's our going to be a proposed major. And then we also have a minor that's um, you know, re uh, related to this. Um, the classes are similar, but you take fewer classes. 
But what's interesting about this minor is that there is this non calculus crack. It's possible to have a uh, data science minor without calculus. So you skip all the calculus course, and what you take instead is this linear algebra matrix analysis course as, uh, as, as your kind of your math course, which, is, which won't require any calculus. Okay. Um, before we, I move on to the next step, I just want to say that uh, recently we got some funding from the NSF and the California Teaching uh, California Learning Lab to develop some of these courses that's related to our, our, our program. All right, so, so what are our next steps? So we have to develop these new courses that we propose um, and then further develop other domain uh, emphasis uh, tracks. Um, and so really the, one of the pain points is really coordinating with this other, this other data science program um, in analytics. So um, see how, how we can reconcile some of these uh, tracks with them and then how to manage these domain foci um, how to coordinate with all the different departments that want to participate in this uh, this, uh, yeah, this program. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm around. And also my colleague Suzanne is here, so feel free to uh, approach us. Thank you. Okay. So, do you want to do questions, or you want to take questions? Yeah, if if you all have questions, we can we can jump into that. We have some prepared, but they're not that good. Hmm? Sure. Across the different UC campus, how updated your courses are in addressing the local industry's needs for data scientists? I'm sorry. Can you repeat the last part? How did your course contents are in addressing the needs for the local market, the, the, the labor market demand in the local areas? Have you reached out to the local industries to meet with them, what they require to make sure you cover them in your classes? Or... Basically, how do you come up with your content? Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I can talk about. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay. <laughs> uh, this one won't turn on either. Um, yeah, so for UCR, we did reach out to um, local companies within um, the Inland Empire, so like the Naval Base and um, Esri, and so some of the um, content um, in some of the electives and um, courses, we, we do try to integrate that, and they especially work with us on the capstone courses. So uh, one of the things that we're trying to do for our capstone course is work with local industry to for them to provide projects and mentors um, and, and have student teams similar to what UCSD does um, to, to work on that. So they, they, they support some of the courses, for example, like ESRI works, uh, we have a GIS um, specific course and they provide a lot of the tooling, a lot of um, the knowledge um, needed for supporting those type of courses. And we're always reaching out um, to industry to get feedback about the programs, especially the master's programs. So um, there is a bit of the emphasis in that um, these type of these industries want students to go beyond the bachelor's degree and take MS. So they, they do a lot of advising um, for, for both degree programs. So um, I'll add something that maybe uh, or them over that. So uh, Versada also has a lot of connections with the national labs. So we have close collaborations, for example, with the Joint Genomes Institute uh, here in Berkeley, and also the Lawrence Livermore National Lab. So uh, uh, some of our students end up there. And so we are, are aware of what some of the skills that we're looking for, right? Uh, not just in data science, but also like in the computer. Yeah, we have an industry partner program um, 
They also help run capstones, but they also advise on content. And actually, um, a good number of the people we have teaching courses are doing so part time. Uh, they're they're data scientists in industry and teaching a course uh, in the evening. That's exactly what I wanted to say. So so yesterday we had uh, um, or today we had the did machine learning right. So he's like a lecturer part time, but he's like running his machine learning company the other part time. Uh, somebody we have um, is uh, Fernando Perez, who like founded Project Jupiter and is always like, you know, what's the latest thing and like how to move big satellite data around the world and remote sensing, you know, like, so he's bringing that into Data 100. You know, John De Niro worked at Google doing NLP stuff. So there's a really interesting thing where like faculty bring in what, you know, their perspectives are on from, you know, like other parts of their career. Uh, Lisa, who was here, like she also has like the startup ed tech startup that she works with. So a lot of people are like moving between the two worlds, which I think is is really interesting. And and Aaron, who you mentioned, who was a big who used to come and was like a big part of building the program, like coming between Amazon and and uh, you know, so coming through the arc of their career, sort of feeling the tools. So uh, and then there's just something as we talked about, like there's all these capstones, so there's all this experience seeing the students go out there. I don't think we really harvest that enough. Like we don't like, what skills did you use? Or what, you know, like we don't like have a systematic way to capture, which would be an interesting thing that we're not using the capstones to refine our own course offerings. Like that would be another layer. Um, I talk to the students a lot. So the students, you know, um, a lot of my work is like motivated by working with super cracker jack students, right? So they're going, to do their internships over the summer and coming back and like going to Apple or Google or, or Goldman and coming back, you know, so I'm like asking them what they're using. Um, and and the, there's a funny thing there where, where a lot of them in an entry level job are seeing like tools, right? Like, or a classic one is the SQL where like they saw SQL and data 100, but they didn't take a class. So now like UC Berkeley's got Data 101, which we haven't talked about here, but like there's a, like a really substantial class in that now. So now I tell everybody, take that Data 101 class. Um, yeah, and then, then there's like our, our uh, data mining class, which is again, very tools, very like practical, very like you're gonna use this in a job. Um, so the students do have a sense like that. Like if you look, read the Reddit or read wherever the students are talking to each other, they have a sense of like what are what classes are more the toolsy classes versus the like theoretical you know deriving the latest algorithm class yeah i don't know if that's fair <laughs> san diego too yeah it's in, it's no battery i think the battery's dead all right battery's dead yeah i think it's interesting because students like we have a class the vision the viz course teaches d3js uh -huh. and students are like when am i ever going to use this and we're like well this is one of the main tools used in industry yeah. for creating bespoke visualizations, but uh, they don't always have a great sense of what is used even. Yeah. Uh, there's a question over here. Yeah, yeah, here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, a question for Chester and then a modified question for Chester specifically. For you, you mentioned that you have this two part capstone experience where in the first capstone, uh, within the first part, uh, the students are replicating uh, uh, some already existing work. Uh, so, could you comment a little bit more about so expanding uh, to, to 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 everybody? Could you say a few more uh, additional words about uh, the project-based experiences in your uh, in your data science programs? Yeah. So, in that first quarter of the capstone, it's it's replication. And what that looks like is gonna depend on who their mentor is. So we have some mentors who are machine learning theorists and what the project for them looks like is here's a paper, like a, a, a recent paper, let's reproduce the figures in that paper. And then quarter two is let's do something tangential. But there are many more, I mean, what percentage of our projects are like that? A small percentage. I mean, a lot of them are industry projects. So we work with Intel, for instance, uh, project replication there might be, hey, we have a data set and we know the result on this data set, so let's get that result. Um, and then using the skills that you learned for that in the second quarter, let's do something new, right? 
Um, and yeah, I'll just add that project-based learning, that capstone is like the end of uh, ECHO where we have the intro course is kind of project-based but very constrained data. At the end of their second year, they do projects with messy data. The capstone is like, okay, here's a real project. You're working on a team. Here's, you're out in the real world basically. Um, so for our capstone um, based course, it is within computer science department, so we have a variety of projects, but um, the data science specific projects, I try to get either um, faculty provided projects, which could be a little bit more on the research side, like implement um, this, this work in the research paper and extend upon it, but we do have a lot of industry um, projects um, and those provided by county or state agencies, so for example, um, one of the past projects is um, Riverside County provided us with data about their social worker and they had a problem with retention and they wanted to understand who's leaving, why they're leaving, is it, you know, a commute issue, is it a pay issue, is it they haven't received a promotion, is, you know, and, and kind of understand their data. So students worked a lot in the first quarter to understand the requirements and learn about the data from um, this customer who may not have been very technical. Um, so in, in this case, it, they, they, they learn how to communicate with somebody who's non-technical and, and figure out what are the requirements, how to ask questions, how to communicate with that person and um, grab the data and work with really messy data in the beginning. And in the second um, course, they implement something. So in this case, they implemented dashboards, reports, and they work a lot to make sure that it's easily deployable for this person so that we actually can hand it off and it's something that is usable. So some of the projects we've worked on is data for um, city of Riverside, county of Riverside. They have a lot of data problems. We've also worked with um, labs like NASA JPL and they provided us some data about um, satellite imagery and they had some researchy problems for us. Uh, so in that case, we did implement something that they first worked on and we tried to extend it. And we tried for the most part for these um, type of projects to have a faculty mentor. And this could be the person who's running the course um, and then an industry mentor to support them. But not all our projects are like that. So some projects are just students propose, they have a, you know, an idea that you know, they come up with a paper, like I, I wanna implement this and extend it in this way. Or they find other faculty in the department who would support their project. So we have a variety of, of, of projects for our customers. So I, I, we haven't implemented the capstone course yet. But let me tell you something we're doing this summer, which is we got, I don't know, 16 undergraduate students. We're doing a project, a project in data science. So they don't even have a major, but they're just really interested in it. So we got two graduate students to lead them in research. Um, and we don't have a particular project for them, but it's actually the students who are generating the projects. So they look at various data sets, they're looking at different papers. Um, you'd be surprised how creative students are. We tried this uh, a couple of years ago, and then they looked at the scheduling of uh, lectures teaching their writing course. What is the optimal way to teach 50 of these courses in one semester um, so that there are no conflicts and everybody's happy with their schedule? Um, and so the students were free to figure out a way to solve that problem. And it took them a summer, but they were uh, they were very creative in, in their solution. Um, and they they actually presented that research uh, uh, at, at the joint math meetings. Is there a question, Rick? Uh, I don't know if you can speak on this part. Heard you say something about this earlier. It's come up a couple of times um, about how, like, all your applicants like four um, and how, how like the GPA is like using its uniqueness like, and metric. Are you looking at other ways of measuring like what students you want to see? Like, and I know this is like maybe subject specific because like the industry is also like if you need a degree. Like, it's what's important. Like, 
when you look at a candidate? Um, yeah. Yeah, very good question. I, I, I'll clarify that when I said that our applicants had 4.0, I was talking about applicants at UCSD who are majoring in something else and want to major in data science. The applicants that made it, their median, because our posted uh, policy, right, is we rank people on their GPA and screening courses, a few data science courses. The ones that made it, the median was a 4.0. So uh, but the, I mean, overall, the applicants was like a three, seven or something like that. Right. I mean, so still very high. I mean, um, how do you assess? I, personally, I feel this is industry's problem. Like my job is to teach and I would love it if I could just teach anyone who wanted to learn data science and I don't care about their grade. It's up for, it's up to industry to figure out how to hire people. But that's not the world we live in, and I understand the grade ha it, it has two meanings, right? Or one one part of my job is unfortunately certification. I don't like that part of my job, but that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't know what more to say other than that. I think uh, yeah. No, I have a question for you. So you talked about that you guys have the, the two data programs. So I assume how you talked about that's not what you wanted to happen. So can you talk about why that happened? Is she go back in time? You'd like to make that not happen. No, 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 no. I just, I'm not. Yeah. Can maybe we can talk offline? Yeah, yeah I think that. Because this is recorded, right? Yeah. 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 I'll say. I want to say. I'm going to say. I have very, very wonderful colleagues. <laughs> well, we can talk afterwards. Well, we should probably wrap up if that's okay. Yeah. Um, thanks to the panelists. <laughs>